Hey, I'm Zach and I'm a texture artist in the VFX industry. After lecturing at a few universities, I found that a lot of people have put off using Mari because there isn't much training out there. So I'm going to be uploading a complete series with how I textured and look dev this bike. Be sure to subscribe to let you know when I post the next video. Today, I'd like to share with you how I block out materials in Mari. You may have used the material system before, you may love it, but one of the things I don't like about it is the fact that it takes ages to set up and I just don't have time for that. I'm going to show you a template that I made that's going to speed up the entire process for you. I'm going to share this with you for free, so stick around to the end of the video and I'll show you where you can get it. If all of this is brand new to you, don't worry, I recently released a complete tutorial with how I textured this space capsule from start to finish. It's focused on how you can create a showreel quality asset to get you ready for the VFX industry. But first things first, I'm using this bike modelled by Josh Doherty. I'll leave his details in the description below so you can check him out. So I have a fresh Mari scene here and I'm going to type tab and type in material. And if I click OK, it will bring up an Arnold standard surface shader as well. And we have all of these lines that are connecting the material node into the shader. If we click plus on the material node, it will bring up all of these lines and they make them a lot more complicated than what it actually is. Essentially, all they are are inputs from the material into the shader. And if I just type N and we can rename the material. And then if we control and double click on the material, we can then jump inside of the material. And this is where we can plug in all of our texture maps to drive the surface quality of this shader. There's an absolute ton of inputs and it makes it look a lot more complicated than what it actually is. And the standard way that we would normally set up our materials is we could get a constant color node like here and we can plug it into the diffuse color, for example, or we can drag a texture in from the image manager and plug it into the spec roughness, for example. And I find it takes ages to do this for every single material. So I made this super, super simple template where I just right click and import nodes and it nicely lays it all out for you. The only manual thing you really need to do are just connect a few of the inputs, but they're kind of already lined up for you. But it kind of simplifies the whole interface inside of each material. And this is why I like using this template. So all I need to do is just change these values around to make the material that I want. So I change the metallic, I'll change the diffuse, and I'm trying to make a steel here. So I'm jumping into the next material, which is going to be paint. And again, control double click and we'll right click and we will just import these nodes. The only fiddly thing that you have to do with the node graph when you sort of zoom out like this is just move the nodes across. And if you just line it up, we can then just connect all the maps that we are going to be using and completely disregard all the ones that we aren't. And so now we have two materials, we need to merge them together. So we're going to use a merge channel node. And it's just going to layer one above the other. And then all we need to do is just connect the merge that we've just made and plug it into the shader. And now to dictate which material goes on top where, all we do is just paint a, it's just paint exactly where we want it to go. So if I just press P for paint, create a black color and wherever I paint white is where the material that's on top will go. And now I'm just going to go around the model and start to block in where I want paint to go.
right clicking again, bringing that template in, connecting the inputs up, and just by really quickly bl blocking in our shaders, we can start to block in a palette of what areas we want to be metallic, what areas we want to be paint, what areas we want to have leather, rubber, all of this kind of thing, and just kind of come up with a design for how we want it to look. And this is exactly how I like to work. I like to block in really, really quick materials, block in rough shader responses, just so I can get a feel of the overall asset, how I want it to look. and I'm just selecting all the pieces here that I want to be rubber. Just one thing to note here, you can see all the pipes and cables, they're all UV completely straight away. This means when I put textures over it, it's gonna tile completely along with the cables and pipes. And I'm just renaming my masks just to make sure everything is nice and clean and tidy. And this is really important in production because you never know when someone else might pick up your Mari archive. So naming everything and keeping everything very tidy is super important. And this is why I like to have this template here because everything is really, really organized. Yes, it's quite spread out, but it allows me to go as, as complex as I like by layering up lots of different textures and lots of different masks inside of these materials. The only time consuming part is just connecting all of these materials up. And once we have all of them connected up, we can go to as much complexity as we like, but everything is nice and clean and tidy and packaged inside of these materials. And again, I'm just getting another merged channel node and I'm just blocking in a really rough color for the leather. And then once I have all of my materials blocked out, that's when I'll then go in and bring in some textures to help break up these surfaces, adding some bump maps, some scratches, some smudges and all that kind of thing. And now I'm just gonna go through the rest of the bike and block out the materials. I do have reference that's on my other window that I am referring to just to make sure that I'm getting the right materials in the right places. So this isn't necessarily the most exciting part of texturing, setting everything up, but if you set everything up in a really clean way, it's gonna allow you to be very flexible later on down the line. And being flexible later on down the line is exactly how we need to work in, in a production environment, because we could get lots of changes and we need to work in a way that will allow for that. So I'm gonna wrap up this video here. The rest of the video is just me blocking out the rest of the materials and defining exactly where they're gonna be. In the next video, this is when we're gonna to start to bring in some textures to help break up the surfaces in a realistic way. If you wanted to pick this template up, you can pick it up for free on my Gumroad. And if you like this video and you wanna see more videos like this, please give it a like down below 
And if you have friends who are also interested in learning texturing, it would mean a lot to me if you could share this video. So be sure to subscribe to let you know when the next video drops and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.